So I'm gonna be taking two Yak 55s and showing them together to make a Yak 110. And um, all they know, someone did this full scale, which is the, I guess, inspiration on why I designed the Yak 55. It's just taking a little bit of time to actually get time to build the 110, and I finally have time to do it, so I'm super excited. Because like I said, that was the main purpose of me designing the Yak 55. And it's a great flying plane. I'm super stoked. So I'm gonna go down to manufacturing, get two Yak 55 kits, and then have Jason cut out some parts I designed to make it a 110 and uh, get on that process. Okay, Mike, what do we got here? So I have two Yak 55 fuselages and some other bits and pieces to them. Billy was getting like an arsenal of Yaks together. He never finished these two, so I stole them from him and I'm gonna turn it into a Yak 110. So I have all the additional parts that I need. All you need is the center wing section, a longer spar, and a different elevator, and then obviously two Yak 55s. So how are you gonna modify the uh, the fuselages? Um, the fuselages don't need much themselves. All I'm gonna do is pull the tail fins off. So I'm gonna pull the elevator out, slide the new elevator in, and then that's really it. And then I have a center wing section too, but the rudder's gonna stay the same, so. So pretty straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. Not cool. much to do. Cool. Ready to get to it? Oh yeah. So it's looking like a Yak 110. Kind of. I wanted to, before I glue the spar into the center wing section, I wanted to test the overall length of the spar. Looks like I might have went a little too long because I have a gap on both sides and a gap in the middle too, so. Gotta fix that. Pretty good. It looks like a Yak 110. I mean, I couldn't mess that up too badly. <laughs> it's just 255 or something to give it. But, I don't know. Obviously the tail's gonna be a little different. Looks pretty snazzy though, looks pretty snazzy. How do you think it's gonna fly? Hopefully good. I mean, I know scientist-y here, the more throw you have doesn't mean the more control you have. So if you crank your rates stupid high, think about when you get a 90 degrees, it acts as more as a brake than a control surface. And the same thing happens when you add more control surfaces. So with me having two sets of rudders, just because I have two doesn't mean I'm gonna have that much more authority. It actually might lessen my authority on rudders. So I might need to go real low um, with the throw on the rudder and maybe the differential thrust help me out there. But I know a lot of things get iffy because I know I've seen some people when they smash things together, like I've seen Mustangs smash together, they will actually take the elevators and make them elevons as well to try to give themselves more roll because the plane obviously has a larger wingspan now and it kills them on it because Acts more to brake and then it almost acts like a yaw control more than a roll. So I think I'm gonna have some issues with that running into it, but I mean, nothing I won't be able to figure out come past. So it'll be fun though. Okay, this is a awesome time because Mike has been wanting to make this Yak 110 for literally years. He actually designed the Yak 55 for this purpose so he could take the design, modify, and make the Yak 110. Now I want to surprise him because this is a huge step because he's been wanting to do this for so long. I want to surprise him with a gift after this. So I'm going to actually draw up some rocket mounts so we can strap some rockets underneath this once it gets flying. Now I don't have time nor the machinery to actually cut out those brackets. So I'm going to send the files off to our good friends at PCB Way. We've been doing projects with them, everything from carbon fiber to PCB boards. We love partnering with them because we don't have the time nor the machinery to actually make these ideas happen. So what we do, we send off the files to PCB Way in about a week, they come back and guess what? We have the project in our hands, ready to assemble and ready to go. So I'm gonna go to my office, I'm gonna draw up some rocket mounts, I'm gonna send them off and hopefully in a week or so, we're gonna get them back, we can strap them on this Yak 110 and let us know if you guys wanna see that episode. Also, check out PCB Way. They make all your ideas come true. So I'm gonna send off those files to PCB Way real quick. Then I'm gonna go check on Mike and see how he's doing with this Yak 110. So I'm just about done with this thing. I don't have much left on it. All I have is the motor ESC and wheels and then the receiver in it. And this thing's ready to become airborne. Um, yesterday I was able to finish up all the servos and get all that done. Some challenges within doing like the elevator because it's all in one. I mean, you have two servers running one control service. A little more tricky there. But with our XL linkage stoppers, it made it way easier to do rather than trying to bend exactly the same like bushrod wires. So that helped a ton. 
but it's looking good. It's light for its size, which is amazing. So I'm super, super excited to get ready to fly this thing. So not much left to do. Let's go ahead and get to it. So what you got going on? Um, it's kind of mocked together. <laughs> oh, I love it. But it looks pretty cool. That is cool. It's way bigger than I thought. Well, I mean, you take, uh, yeah, I guess so, because you're not taking the full wingspan of two planes, it's just partial. But. Yeah. When we were at Oshkosh, uh, one of our favorite uh, times was when the Yak 110 was flying. We even got to interview the gentleman. Yeah. And uh, when he was flying with the Jack, uh, I think it was a Jack Lynx Waco biplane yeah. that has jet powered, they put on the most amazing air show. And this thing did things that just boggle my mind. Well, it was like one of the, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some more now out there, but for its size, it was one of the only planes that could just hang there and stay. Yeah. Yeah, they literally stopped in midair, hovered, and then literally took off again. And of course, they had that awesome jet in there. Are you gonna do something for the jet? Um, I have like a little thrust tube, okay. but for this one, I think I'm just gonna try to get it without gotcha. any things that I'm not 100% certain on. Gotcha. Are but you, in you, the future, I could. Are you gonna cheat and make the props counterclockwise, so, or you know, counter-rotating so they uh, prompt work? Yeah. Prompt. Just to make my life a little easier. But I like that. It's also nice because I don't have any thrust in going in, so I don't have to worry about that either. So what did you have to change ultimately? The tail and the wing? Uh, yeah, longer center spar on the tail and the center wing. That's, That's it. it. It looks fantastic. It does. It looks awesome. So how long until you have it ready to fly? I mean, I just got to glue everything together. I got to cut out two new rudders because I tried to salvage the old ones, but it didn't work out well. Okay. And then it's just electronics. I love it, man. Great work. Cool. Look forward to seeing fly. Me too. Okay, Mike, you almost done? Uh, yeah. All I have left is the side force generators. I have some Velcro um, to put in the battery bay and then the props, and then we're all good to go. So this thing came together really, really nice. It looks better than honest I expected foam board to look as a Yak 110. And uh, no really issues other than I had to cut down the spar and that's really it. There, there was no issues with it. So it went together really nice, really smoothly. And uh, I'm just stoked to get this thing in the air. What, what, do, you, what do you think it's gonna fly like? Because you got, <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's not gonna fly like a Yak 55. No, not at all. Well, it would have some characteristics of it. Like, obviously, a knife edge would be a little more slippery just because they're both round fuselages. But I don't know what to expect because I haven't flown many twin engine planes recently. And this is a uh, twin engine along with crazy throws and fun times. So, I'm honestly expecting it to be a little lethargic on some maneuvers. It might not knife edge that well, it might not knife edge spin. Flat spins would be fine because I got differential. But any high pops, like maneuvers, like a crankshaft, I don't think it'll do. Too much mass, just in weird spots. But other than that, I think it's gonna be a real fun plane to fly, absolutely. You can fly it real scale, slow, I'm guessing. And then you might have a little fun, be a little crazy with it. So we'll see how it goes. Sounds good, let's awesome. get flying. Okay, so Mike just finished up the Yak 110. We are heading out to Ready Bore Runway. That's actually where we do a lot of our flying from. It's also who makes our foam board. Ready Board actually makes our foam board for all of our kits and all these sketchy builds that you see us build up here at the shop. We love building out a foam board because you can actually do exactly what we're doing here at the shop yourselves. Huge thanks to Ready Board and making our foam board, sponsoring this runway. Uh, I think Michael is actually hooking up the batteries right now. Mike's ready to take to the skies and see if this thing will fly. Backwards. All right, you've been putting a lot of work in this for a long time. I've had it designed for a while now. It's yeah. just, I've never taken the time to actually do it. Cause I mean, it's almost double the work yeah. to build one, but. I feel like when you first started designing the Act 55, it was all to actually get to this point. It was. It was, I love that. And now it's finally becoming a reality for you. Yeah, and it's a, uh, more nerve-wracking than I thought. <laughs> Just a second fuselage makes it seem so much. Yeah. I don't know. Different. I think it's gonna fly incredible. Hopefully. Yeah. But so a lot of times and stuff, uh, people are looking for the next step in the 3D. I know you and Jason, when you put out the release video, you guys were showing what experts can do. But um, really, this is a pretty approachable airplane. Like if you're going from the FT3D to this, you're gonna get a whole other experience of maneuvers, right? Yeah, and you can dial down the rates and still fly as like a scale yak. I guess you yeah. Could say. One so. of the coolest things I liked about it when he let me fly it was it has such a light wing load and it doesn't bite you. You have plenty of power to pull out, it's still gentle. It's just very capable. And it's not like overpowered where like you give it full throttle and the plane's like wiggling around, squirreling out of the air. It's like, it's like the perfect amount of thrust to yeah. weight, yeah. in my opinion. So. 
Tesla. If you guys are ever looking to kind of grow in the hobby and aerobatics is where you want to, check out a lot of our foam board designs. You're not really compromising much, but the cool thing is they can take a beating and you can really kind of cut your teeth and learn on techniques and different maneuvers on this, knowing that when you step onto, uh, you know, maybe a Bosswood aircraft or a much more expensive aircraft, you've already kind of cut your teeth and learned on this as a, uh, a learning tool. And it's always really great to bring on the sketchy days when you're not really worried about breaking something. And I mean, I busted the wing off of it and I was able to glue it right back glue on the right flight again. again. So. <laughs> All right, so you ready to take that for a maiden? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of cool because we're flying together. Typically, he's chasing, but today we have Chadwick doing that with your quad. Yeah, and he's dancing right now. And so. he's not all excited. <laughs> Chadwick, Chadwick's an awesome part of our team. Oftentimes, behind the scenes, we're really honored to be able to fly with him today. All right, buddy, you ready for this? I am. Okay. All my things are going the right way, so. I love I'll just put my hands in my pocket. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> I like how you make everything look so uneventful. <laughs> I promise, guys, this is his first maiden. Did you have any idea what it's going to feel like flying for the first time? No, but honestly, it looks like a P-38 or like just one of our twins. It's just not as fast as I thought, not as like crazy power. Well, you got a lot of drag there. Yeah, tons but of if, drag. If you remember, the 110 wasn't actually overly fast either. It mm -hmm. just was really cool looking. Here comes a roll. Well, I'll tell you right now, that roll weighs way higher than the original. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did put um, our wood control horns on every single one yeah. of these for the extra throw. Just because I didn't know what I wanted or what I needed from this. And I can always dial down the race, yeah. but it's kind of hard yeah. adding some when you don't have it. Give us a little flyby. I just like the way it looks. It looks so cool. You got plenty of power? Yeah, you do. <laughs> It's, it's funny because I have enough power to go vertical like that, Yeah. but it's not like incredibly punch out. Either. Almost like it flies the same same speed vertical as it does horizontal. <laughs> it does. Well, I'm going to try to do some lower risk, so I'm going to first just put it inverted. I love this. <laughs> Out of it. One of the really cool things is um, anything you do with foam board, you can chop it, hack it. We call it kit bashing. You can make your own designs. That knife edge is beautiful. I think it does it better than the 55. Yeah, well, you have no Thanks. lifting body. Thanks for the differential there, I think. Honestly, did that better than I was expecting. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of worried about. Bring it a little slower. Usually I do this with a few mistakes high, but I want to see what's going on today. Oh, that's fine. You got this. You got that differential working for you now, so it's probably you don't have to work the rudder nearly as much, huh? Not as much, no. Look at that. <laughs> so Michael actually came to me. He's like, I want to build like a nine foot version of this. And I was like, Michael, simmer down. You got to build a small one first. I don't think you like that answer. <laughs> but now that I see it look like this, I think a bigger one would be really cool. It would be. And then here comes the flash pin. I put that in sideways. There it is. That was my fault. It pulls right out. <laughs> so Michael's flying with a pocket radio. A lot of times people think that they gotta have an advanced radio for an advanced airplane. This is sub $100 to be your first radio. We programmed every channel, has the same power as HTX. Plenty of mixing and stuff. You have this on eight channels right now? Yeah. And we are able to sub tune and tune everything in with no problem. So if you guys are looking to get a radio that you don't have to upgrade later, check out our pocket radio. It has pre-tuned models. We just grabbed the twin engine with differential and basically just changed a couple features like rudder, uh, split elevator, things like that to make it work. I'm gonna try to put it in a knife edge spin. Okay. I don't know how this is gonna go, so we'll see. I'm gonna to find out. I wanna see how strong it is. That's pretty good. It's not bad. It has a hard time getting that vertical aspect um, with the wings like yeah. very, very straight up and down, but I mean. It's just so cool to look at. So this is a Yak 110, so we need a Yak 165. Or a Yak 220. Ooh, 220. <laughs> It's so goofy. <laughs> Dude, that's nuts. I'm proud of you, son. This looks incredible. Really good work. <laughs> There's a lot of wing air to catch to push me around, though, when the breeze comes. I see that, yeah. It looks so cool. And this is your first flight. And you're flying off of 2200 three cells, right? Yes. Which these can take four cell, right? Yeah. I don't know if I'll I, I would go down to 11 inch prop unless you have it well ventilated, but yeah. A little bit of a crosswind for this one, anyway. 
Oh, that flag's right in the way. <laughs> so you got this. Your brain, I want to just put it in the grass. <laughs> Runway's nice. <laughs> awesome work. So what do you think of it? This is your first flight. Honestly, way more cable than I was expecting. Yeah. Like when you add extra stuff onto it. Yeah. Just because it's more control services never means more. Yeah. I mean, you can take the rates and if you just crank them all the way up, you actually might lose your roll rate or lose your ability to do certain things because the action was more as drag rather than a control surface. And I was kind of wondering if that would happen with my rudders and stuff, but it didn't seem to. I think it says always has so much air going over with the mm -hmm. Yeah. It looked great. It looked actually very gentle. It was. Yeah. It was a fun flyer for sure. I love it. So guys, this is something you guys can do too. We have our Yak 55 kit available. All you need to do is just take two of them, stick them together with basically what the wing cord is in the middle, right? Yeah, so it's where the end of the wing is. You just make the same plane across and then it's all good. That's it. So, so if you guys want to build your own, have some fun too, go ahead and do that. And as always, thanks for being part of Flight Test Family. So I'm proud of you. Be good. Awesome. All right, tune in next time because I'm going to try to talk. I'm going to put a jet on this thing. All right, see you later.